Uh, welcome back. Uh, uh, we're continuing our march into the world of motors. Uh, last time we saw a, a, we described a DC motor. Uh, pass it around again. Again, the, uh, the essence of a DC motor is we put in a DC voltage and we get power. We get electrical power in, mechanical power out. Uh, and the software is going to control the, the power to the motor by adjusting the duty cycle of a transistor circuit. That's what we saw last time. Uh, and that's the essence of the motor we're going to have in lab um, 10. Uh, we're going to do uh, three, I'm just going to introduce three more motors today just for fun, just to see you the essence of, uh, of what our other choices are. The second motor uh, that uh, you might wish to connect to a microcontroller is called a brushless DC motor. Uh, the difficulty with a DC motor is it had brushes, and the brushes are the thing that causes the, fee the electric current to flip. Uh, inside the inside the magnetic field, uh, but the brushless DC motor is going to remove the brushes and add a sensor. So when you look at this uh, brushless DC motor, you're going to see two sets of cables here. Uh, the cables that go to this little plastic thing are Hall effect sensors, and the cable that goes into the meat of the motor uh, go to the windings uh, inside the motor. And so we're going to have transistor outputs to drive the windings to create electromagnets. And we have a Hall effect sensors, which we're going to read back in. And those sensors are going to tell the, the system where the, where, the, um, where the rotator is relative to the magnets. Uh, the advantage of <clears throat> a brushless DC motor is it's very low friction. You go, hey, John, I feel something. Okay, here. That's actually the electro, that's the permanent magnets inside of here. Uh, but there are actually no touch, other than the bearings, other than the rotating part, there are no touching parts, which means this is a very reliable motor and it'll last a long time. It's very efficient. Um, it's got great acceleration uh, and will last a long time. So let me, uh, got, a, got a video of how this works. Um, this is a video I found on the internet. All right, let me go ahead and stop it right here. All right. Um, like I said, it's got, it's got three sensors. They're called Hall effect sensors. Uh, and they're illustrated, uh, the signals are illustrated up here. Those are going to be three digitally compatible signals that tell us the angle of the shaft from <clears throat> uh, 0 to 360 degrees. And then we're going to have three phases. <clears throat> Phase is another word for the electromagnet. Okay? Uh, and it's in a Y shape. <clears throat> and it turns out uh, there are three outputs. And we're going to use high current drivers to drive those outputs. And we're going to, uh, if you can see from this configuration right here, the output of a phase can either be high or low. Okay? And as we step through this, uh, right here, you can see that it's driving, uh, it's driving uh, uh, B and C and driving current through the, across the BC coils in such a way that it creates a magnet uh, to, to force or to encourage the force to go in that direction. So when it steps through one more time, uh, now it's A and, B, A and C, and now it's A and B, and now it's B and C, and A and C. So if you look at the colors of, you put your sort of focus on just the A for a moment, focus on just this wire here, you can see that it will go through three different possibilities. Do you see them? If you just look at this line right here, what do you see? What are the three things you see? Red, blue, and black. Right? It's either high, low, or off. Okay? And that causes, if we have three windings, okay? and the other thing you can tell by looking at this from a big picture, at any given point, what can you tell me about how many black, how many blue, and how many red do you see? At any given point in this cycle, what can you tell me about this motor? One red, one blue, one black. 
Okay? So at any given time, it's always driving current. Okay? It's always driving current. Current is always flowing out one and in the other, and one is always off. Okay? And so uh, there are six phases here as it, as it cycles through uh, those possibilities. Okay? So uh, in each of them participate. And so this requires a controller. Okay? So it's a beautiful motor, uh, low friction, high acceleration, nice torque. Uh, used, like I said, in, in many of the electric cars uh, use this motor. Uh, drones have them. If you ever see a drone, okay, that didn't cost 50 cents. Uh, it's got brushless DC motors in it because of the long life and the high acceleration. Okay? Uh, but it's going to require a controller. But if you think about it, it's not that complicated, right? You see three inputs, three outputs, not too complicated. But it still will require a controller um, to handle. Okay, so that was a brushless DC motor. Uh, the next one, we got, like I said, I'm going to have a whole, mo a whole lecture on stepper motors after we finish lab, um, uh, lab 10. But I'll just introduce it here. Uh, in a lot of ways, it looks like the brushless DC motor. In a sense, the current is always flowing. And when, you've, when you rotate the shaft, you can feel the steps, okay? Just saying. Um, and it's uh, got, well, <clears throat> either two coils or four coils, depending on how, how you build it. Uh, but essentially, it's got coils, and the current is flowing always. Here's an uh, animation that we created for our MOOC. Uh, again, uh, it shows only two coils or four coils, but there can be 50 or so different uh, coils in there. But so this illustrates that current is always flowing and the output of the, of the microcontroller is always uh, is going to go through the sequence of 5, 6, 10, 9. So watch it as I flip through here. Here's the 5. And what it does is if the current is going in, in a certain direction on a coil, it becomes a north magnet. And in this illustration, red means north and blue means electromagnetic electromagnet south and so this is a stable state this will sit right there because the permanent magnet on the rotor the thing that rotates uh, is always south and always north and so this is a very happy place for this system because it minimizes uh, the, uh, it, the the potential and so the south is between those two norths, and the north is between those two south. But if I flip one of the coils, right? So uh, again, we have five. We have four outputs. I'm going to flip one of them and go. Doesn't matter. I'm going to go clockwise. Okay. And one of them flipped. Two of them are the same, but one pair is flipped. See, it went from a five to a six. Okay. And now the new stable state, okay, is is rotated, in this case, uh, 40, uh, 90 degrees. Yeah. And if I flip it again, the state is now over there. I flip it again, that's the 10, and there's the 9, and there's the 5, and there's the 6, and there's the 10, there's the 9. So what the software does is rotate this 5, 6, 10, 9. Uh, in summary, what we have is a motor that loves to just sit there. It is the happiest motor it can be if it's not spinning at all. It's just sitting there. Okay? So what this has is what's called a holding torque, which is the torque, the ability for it to sit there and do nothing. Well, to maintain its position. So stepper motors are wonderful in applications where I need to go to a certain spot and stay there. I mean, they're not going to drive your automobiles, but they're going to move the paper through your printer. This is a very typical application. Anywhere you want to do fine motion and reliable position, either angle or distance, stepper motors are wonderful. Uh, but they're open loop. There are no sensors in here. If you know where you start, in this case, if I push the button eight times, what can you tell me? If I go five, six, every time I go from five to six, it goes once. But if I go, if I go, 5, 6, 10, 9, 5, 6, 10, 9, 5, 6, 10, 9. What can you tell me? And I'm back to 5 again. What can you tell me? It's going around twice. It's going around twice, and it's in exactly the same spot where I left it. Okay? 
So this is where I can control. And again, we're gonna we'll drill down on the circuits and the and the software later next week after I finish all the stuff we need to do for lap ten. All right. Yeah, one more, um, and that's the servo. I left it in a bag because all I want you to I want you to wiggle all the motors with your fingers except this one because this one still works and if you actually rotate a motor that has gears in it you'll break them off especially if they have plastic gears okay so this one use your eyes not your elbows okay all the other ones wiggle it I don't care you can feel it. all right uh, but servo motors are good for angle okay good for angle they have a very very simple interface um, uh, they drive a lot of power because they got a built-in controller in them. So what you do is you give it a, a pulse width. In other words, if you give it 1.5 millisecond pulse, it'll go to 30 degrees and sit there. Okay, and you add a load, it'll still go back to 30 degrees. It's got a controller in it. If you go to half a, um, if you go to a half a, um, go to a half a millisecond, it'll go to zero. In this particular one, you give it a pulse width anywhere between a half a millisecond up to uh, two and a half milliseconds, and that will control its angle. Um, if, you're in your, if you're in my office, look for the robot. The robot's got rack and pinion steering, and that uses a servo to set the, the driving angle. Okay? Uh, if you take uh, 445, and next semester, the robots will have rack and pinion steering controlled with um, a servo, and it uses a pulse width modulator. We saw that last time for the DC motor. Uh, this particular servo requires or requ it requests you to give it a 20 millisecond period, but it's just a duty cycle. Okay? I will warn you that the current loads down this thing, this I as a function of time, is quite variable. Because as we saw last time, what's the effect of friction? What is the effect of friction on a motor? What goes way up when you add friction? Current. Current, okay? And so as this thing is loaded and unloaded, as you try to, you know, deal with the mechanical world, uh, the, it, the only way it can survive is to dump more current into there. So. Uh, people come to the office, uh, everything used to work, I hooked up the servo, and now my microcontroller resets. Okay. So a temporary short will drive that 5 volts to ground. They don't, I mean, the servo don't care, it pops back up, but the microcontroller could reset if that's the same 5 volts driving your, your, your digital circuit. So uh, The only disadvantage of this is I like to have two power lines. When I use servos, I come in off the whatever power line and I break it up Here's power for the microcontroller, and there's power for the servos so they don't mess up. So in summary, uh, the DC motor is the simplest. That's the one we're going to do in the lab. Uh, but it will require feedback, and there will be a tack. That's what we're going to do next. Uh, the brushless DC motor is the best, the most fun. Uh, the thing that really requires a lot of digital stuff because those sensors have to be interfaced. Um, and the controllers are, are, are awesome. Although, on the, if I actually had advice to you is to buy it. Uh, you can build one for fun. There's one in the book. Uh, but I, if I actually had a brushless DC motor, I wouldn't use a circuit in the book. I'd just go spend a couple hundred dollars and buy myself one. Uh, servos are good for angle, and steppers are good for position. Very low speed, low torque. Uh, so it's... Uh, it's quiz time, which one has the highest torque? 